Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another speed run commentary. This one's going to be a little different because for the first part of the video I'm going to be going over my build and why I use the Rampage Greatsword over Nargakuga. And then the second part of the video is just going to be me talking over the speed run. So let's get into the build I used for the speed run. I used the Rampage Cleaver S with these ramp up skills sharpness type 1 not all mental boost and affinity surge and with that i get 210 attack white sharpness if i put at least one handicraft on my build and 20 percent affinity i'm also using the full valve strike set which i have slotted handicraft on and then my talisman is just any talisman that has two level two slots doesn't matter what other skills on it, you just need two level two slots. I picked Slugger for more stun damage, but any talisman with two level two slots will work just fine. So, on to why I'm using the Valstrax armor. Well, let's look at my skill list. Dragonheart at level five. When you have 80% health or less, gives you a 10% damage boost. That is 10% bigger numbers. And Greatsword wants that. <laughs> we like our big numbers, our large numerals. I also have Resentment 3, Resuscitate 3, Critical Boost 3, Weak Sex Blade 3. All the stuff you need for max crit to do the most damage. So. This build already has more base damage than Nargakuga. It has white sharpness, and but only has 20% affinity. So how do I solve that affinity? Well, I run a Palico, specifically a Fight Palico, that has Rousing Roar on it. And when Palicos use Rousing Roar, your... Affinity gets boosted by about 30%. So, my affinity is 20, plus 30%, I have 50% affinity. And then plus, when I hit a weak spot, weakness exploit activates and gives me 50% more affinity. So this build with a Palico will give you 100% affinity. I've also calculated the effective raw damage for this build, and I'll put that up on screen. It's a, it's a lot of numbers, but let's compare this to the Nargakuga build. Also, I like Rampage because my greatsword is a fish. I mean, it's beautiful. So this is my Nargakuga build. So let's quickly go to my skill list. I have Dragonheart level 5, Attack Boost level 3, Resentment 3, Resuscitate 3. Max crit stuff. So, this build has less raw damage than the Rampage Greatsword. So, I'm going to put the effective raw calculations on screen. But all you need to know is that this is just less damage. It has slightly more affinity. But again, you can just use a Palico with the Rampage Greatsword. And you get 100% affinity. So, yeah. Even with a god talisman that you can get up to attack boost 6 on the Nargakuga Greatsword, Rampage is still better because you can just use that god talisman on, Ra on Rampage and it's just better. So yeah, Rampage is overall better than Nargakuga and, you know, I like to use it because fish. Alright, so it's time to get into the actual speed run, the meat and potatoes of this video. Let's get into it. So, first thing I want to go over is how I am using True Charge Slash over Raid Slash. And the reason that is is because, first off, True Charge just does more damage. It's better, bigger numbers. And a lot of Valstrax's fight is just you hitting him while he's down. So, and for Raid Slash to be powerful... And get that 50% damage boost, you have to get hit while charging it. 
and when the monster's knocked down, you can't really be getting hit. Unless there's like small monsters, which that's just incredibly lucky. But yeah, I'm gonna start off this fight by throwing a kunai at him, performing a draw attack, rolling away, and doing an ACS to build up mount damage, as you'll see right here. Now this setup, while it's not quite ideal for damage, it pretty much sets me up for setting up. What? <laughs> it sets me up for Dragonheart. Here, I'm gonna flash bomb him. So I can just get some free damage. If you don't know, if, when you flash bomb him, it didn't happen here, but when he does his attack where he puts his wings into the ground, he'll just do it right in front of him. He won't try to, like, go super forward. So you can actually set up a TCS from that and get a lot of extra damage. But that's not the RNG I got. Another mechanic to Valak Strax's fight is that whether he charges up isn't based on how much damage you've done. It's based on how long the fight has been going. So I just like to do damage in this period. Some people like to set up Dongo Adrenaline. That will come into play later in my run. But here I'm just waiting out the charge and doing damage and hopefully enraging him. So I do enrage him, and I know that the fight has been going on for a pretty decent amount of time, and he's done about five to six moves. So I know he's about to charge up. So I'm gonna set up a TCS. And here, crazy numbers. ACS because it does a lot of damage and builds up mount. And here, <laughs> I get incredibly lucky yet again, just like my basil run, where it sets up a perfect TCS. I got super lucky here, and even though I'm not running double dogs, um, as I mentioned, I do have 100% affinity because of my cat, but um, dogs usually do more sleep damage, so I was actually surprised here that my dog and my cat were able to sleep in this early in the fight. So it sets up this perfect TCS for those big juicy numbers. I know he's about to uh, do his dive bomb here, he's around the world attack, so I'm gonna check the time and sharpen my weapon, sharpen my fish. <laughs> here I'm just waiting for him to dive bomb onto me so I can, um, I can get into Dongo Adrenaline. Now I'm gonna flash bomb him and barrel bomb to get rid of the recoverable health because I don't want my health to recover I want to stay within that range where Dongo Adrenaline is going to activate and just if you haven't seen my previous uh, commentary runs Dongo Adrenaline is means when at your sup the super low health the food skill will activate called Dongo Adrenaline where it gives you 30% damage boost so you'll see some crazy numbers Here I get the mount. I'm setting up some stun damage because I want to stun him. I found it easier to set up TCSs and more consistent when you stun him before he charges up. Poke. Tackle. Stun. So, perfect position. TCS. I'm going to power sheath away to boost my damage for 20 seconds. ACS, wide slash. I know he's about to charge up here, so I'm setting up a DCS. And there we go. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, he has to be close to dead. And yep, blue skull appears in the top right. He's almost dead. And there's a run. So, 2 minutes 52 seconds. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'll be putting my build and the food skills and all that in the description. So yeah, hope you enjoyed.